This is an anonymous, a question from an anonymous listener. I have really deep wounds in my wiring around mm. sexual touch and my ability to love and be loved. Mm. They stem from many sources, starting with the conditional love of my earthly father through sexual abuse by a teacher during mercy. my teen years. Mercy, mercy. And later, my first husband abandoning our marriage. I'm so sorry, mercy. That marriage was annulled, and I remarried in the church to a wonderful and loving man who's very hurt by my inability to express and receive sexual love. Mm -hmm. I have prayed for healing. I beg God for the ability to love my husband as he deserves and desires to be loved. But I'm so exhausted. I despair of ever being healed in this lifetime. I feel invalidated by my husband who takes my behavior as a personal rejection of him, even though he knows the source. Yes. How can I share with him these deep wounds without giving details that will not be helpful? I'm so afraid that if he learns of what I allowed to happen to me, he will not be able to love me anymore. Bless you, dear sister. I know, I know these wounds go very, very deep, and I'm sure it seems right now like a, a big tangled mess that may seem almost hopeless how do we get out of all these tangled knots mm. that's kind of my image like a i see a bunch of fishing line or something that's all tangled up and it's like you throw up your hands you're like there's no way we can untangle this this is so convoluted and painful and and how do we get out well, one of the titles of the Blessed Mother is, and I love it, is Undoer of Knots. Mm -hmm. I invite you, dear sister, dear sister, I invite you to open those wounds, those fears, those questions, those longings to your Blessed Mother and, and surrender them to her. Give her that, if that image is helpful to you of a bunch of fishing line kind of all tangled up, uh, just to, to surrender that tangled up mess and say, Mary, I can't do it, but I ask you please to untie these knots. That might be a, a starting point, starting place. I hope you are. Um, I hope you are seeking counseling, some form of therapy, uh, or at, at a minimum, some wise spiritual direction here from a wise spiritual director to help you enter into these wounds and how to experience healing. Uh, if, you're, if you're not already, please check the list of counselors and therapists that we recommend here at the Theology of the Body Institute. If you're listening to the podcast, it's in the show notes. If you're watching here on YouTube, we'll, we'll list those here in the description of this video. You're going to need some, some counseling. You're going to need some therapy if you haven't already been receiving it. I'm also going to hold out this. Um, we have a course coming up at the end of January 2023 at the Theology of the Body Institute. We are teaming up with Desert Stream Ministries. Uh, Andrew Kamiski and his team will be coming here in, to Pennsylvania to Black Rock Retreat Center to do for the second time for the Theology of the Body Institute a five-day course called Sexual Healing and Integration, or sexual redemption and integration, one or the other. Um, point is the same either way. They take people through a series of exercises and presentations and small group conversations to really jumpstart that process of inner healing. There's going to be some hard work required of you and of your husband to seek the healing that you both need here. But it is not impossible to go on that journey, and the Theology of the Body Institute, in conjunction with other people we work with, counselors, Desert Stream Ministries, uh, we also have a, a great working relationship with the John Paul II Healing Center in Tallahassee, Florida. We'll put that link for you. We'll make that available to you as well to look into the programs they offer. And both of those organizations, Desert Stream Ministries and the John Paul II Healing Center, for our patrons, we have on the patron website 
a short retreat uh, that you can do it in one day. We have a retreat that we offered with Desert Stream Ministries and a retreat that we offered with Bob Schutz and the John Paul II Healing Center. And I never want money to get in the way. If you need access to those two retreats, speaking specifically to this person and anybody else who may be in need, uh, and you're not able to pay the $10 a month to be a patron, I never want money to get in the way. Send us an email or go to our podcast uh, and just let us know that you're in need, and we'll, we'll get you links to those retreats free of charge. My goal is just to get this information out there. If you're able to support our ministry for $10 a month, uh, you can get access to those retreats and several other retreats as well that I think you will find very, very helpful on the healing journey. I'm going to say one thing about one comment you made, and then I'm going to pass it off to Wendy. You said you find it very difficult to receive touch. Can you read that again, love, that one line? Uh, sorry, I'm just looking over the question. Yeah. Um, I have deep wounds in my wiring around sexual touch and my ability to love and be loved. Yeah, that's what I wanted to, to touch on. Mm -hmm. Christ healed through physical touch. That's how he healed. Think of so many scenes in the gospel where he lays his hands on people, or he even more strangely and and can seem so odd to us if you really enter into the story. You know, we, we it comes up in the cycle of readings, for example, that Jesus spits on somebody's tongue and now the mute can speak, or he, he turns dirt into mud with his own saliva and then smears it on the guy's eyes, or he, he, he pulls this deaf person aside and he puts his fingers in his ears. The healing that we need in our bodies comes from one source, the body of Christ. How do we heal from unholy touch? We overcome evil with good. We are healed by un from unholy touch by holy touch. And the only 100% pure, 100% no alloy in the gold whatsoever the only 100% holy, 100% pure touch is the touch of Jesus Christ. And that touch reaches us today in the here and now through the sacraments of the church, through the laying on of hands. That's how the sacraments reach us. It's, it's all the sacraments are physical encounters. The laying on of hands in, in confirmation, in ordination, the bathing of the body with water, baptism, anointing of the body with oil. Uh, there's that in baptism and ordination and confirmation. Uh, confessing our sins with our own lips to another incarnate person right in front of us and the laying on of hands in the absolution. Uh, the eating and drinking of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Think of the, the intimacy. <laughs> if the Eucharist is real then every time we go to Mass and receive the Eucharist, Jesus is touching our tongue. <laughs> our tongue, if the Eucharist is real, our tongue is where the touch of God happens most intimately. Holy touch, sacred touch, healing touch. That's what heals us. That's the sacramental life of the Church. So I, I invite this listener to Go to the Eucharist with a, a, a new sense of placing on the altar these fears, these questions, these wounds, wounds, these blocks, and let Jesus touch you there. Let Jesus heal you there. Let Jesus bless you there through the sacraments. What are your thoughts, Wendy? Mm, I, I absolutely agree with your, your recommendation of counseling in the sense um, of how how it can seem, as she said, um, let me just find the word, sorry, it, it just struck me like kind of a despair or a, a hopelessness about um, what can happen. I'm exhausted. I despair of being healed in this lifetime. So, oh, what compassion we all feel for that place of just being I keep trying and I don't know. I don't know if yeah. I'm, if there's any progress. And I think that's what counseling can help us so much is to kind of give us a, a next step 
and a next step. And sometimes if we're just looking for the end goal where all the sensitivity around the wounds is completely healed, um, we can just get easily discouraged because that's, that's kind of way down the path and we can't as easily appreciate, but we've taken this step. And this grace has been given and opened us up to the next small step. And I think that's, that's a beautiful gift that you can experience in counseling is that someone who can reflect back yes. to you, well, here's a place to start and here's how you start. And here's, let's rejoice when we see the good that comes from just beginning here. Um, so I have experienced that in my life and in, in spiritual direction of just at, meeting with someone who could see me i want to be over there i yeah. don't like where i am and and her just lovingly just saying okay just leave that over there mm. Let, let's take you on the next step right here here's what you need to know first here's the place where we begin um so i want to encourage you in that and also i just want to um point out something so gently because I, I wouldn't want someone to feel that I am critical. I think you have actually a beautiful insight into your husband here that is a gift. And yeah. I think the evil one wants to twist it and make it into one more wounding thing right. where you talked about my husband takes my behavior as a personal rejection of him, even though he knows the source. Mm -hmm. There's... um. There, I just see the evil one twisting up something that could be really beautiful, which is just an insight of how important it is to stay on this healing journey because of how important are the consolation we're meant to give one another on the journey yes, as yes. husbands and wives is to each of us personally. And just as you're feeling unable to console him as a wife and he's feeling this inability to console you as he's your husband consoling his wife that insight that i see what she needs i see what he needs and i i'm failing at yes, it yes. is a gift yes, yes to know it and to allow that to open that to one another and to the lord and just ask for grace in those moments even if the grace is just tears of being on the same journey together yes, yes. and like those that, tears of being on the same journey are so unifying right and that's that possibility of that being unifying rather than yes, dividing yes. is what i wanted good to hold point up. wendy i i can think of countless times in our marriage where there's been a little rift between us where i felt not understood by you you felt not understood by right. me sure and one of us reaches out to the other in that time to say a kind word or a word of understanding. And it, so many times you've done that for me, and it, my heart just melts. Uh, and I, I might suggest to this listener that just to put your hand on your husband's shoulder and say, I, I, I know this is hard. I'm, uh, please, please know that I love you, and, and I want to work towards deeper unification with mm -hmm. you, unity with you, deeper bond in our marriage. Just some word of acknowledgement. This is hard, but we're in it together. Mm -hmm. I understand it's hard to, to be, because I'm so wounded, it's it's hard for you that I don't know how to show affection in, 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 in ways that I know would, that you would long for. Just some word of understanding can go a long way mm -hmm. of doing exactly what you just said, turning a situation that could be dividing you into a situation that can be unifying unifying uniting you mm -hmm. right that's that's a beautiful work of grace when those moments happen mm -hmm. well why don't we can would you lead us in a prayer wendy for for this couple and and if everybody out there watching or listening if you would mm -hmm. just maybe we could all commit to lift this couple up in prayer in mm -hmm. a particular way mm -hmm. Lord, you know these two unique, unrepeatable hearts of this husband and wife. And yet you know how many of us can relate to so many things, whether we've experienced them to a lesser degree or to a greater degree, we can relate to what they're going through and that it's the 
the struggle of a human heart to work in this imperfect world, to be patient with the process, to stay committed, to find the help that is needed on this journey. So we lift them up to you. We lift all married couples up to you and ask for a great outpouring of grace in their lives. Yes, that Lord. they would have the gift of spiritual eyes to see one another as a beautiful gift, a precious, unrepeatable gift, and to embrace once again, to take up once again the journey that they've promised to be on together of, of growing closer to you and to the people you made them to be through this sacrament of marriage. Ask yes, you to Lord. bring holy counselors and um, just loving deep friends into their lives that can encourage them on this journey, help them bear the burdens that they're bearing, ask for deep healing to take place in both their hearts. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 